Additive manufacturing will change the face of your car. I mean that kind of literally. The lights are the eyes of your car, and additive brings new design possibilities to car lighting. I talked about this with Dylan Schickel of a major automotive lighting supplier, Varrock Lighting Systems. Varrock, we're a global automotive exterior lighting supplier. We've got about 8,000 employees in 17 countries. Um, our products are on hundreds of vehicle models worldwide. Customers see our products on a daily basis, and they probably never know it. Hmm. Additive manufacturing. What is the promise of additive for Varrock? What is it going to let you do? So I think additive is really interesting because additive manufacturing enables us and really the whole industry to make useful um, end use products but without the cost of conventional tooling, without the timing of developing that tooling. When we, when we look at the car, the lights of the car are the eyes of the car. Much like the eyes of the person, the eyes need to convey the character and the beauty. Uh, and the automotive designers use the lights as a canvas upon which to, to sculpt and to put uh, the, in, the, uh, the theme that they want in the vehicle. The auto designers would like to be able to show variants in the products. The challenge is it costs millions of dollars to build the injection molds to put a unique set of lights on the car. Additive manufacturing and other digital technologies can enable us to reduce that footprint of tooling, to bring those variants to market faster and easier. So uh, variety in lighting is helpful, but you're inhibited against variety right now because too many variations would be too many injection molds. Exactly right. So the, the big benefit for us is going to come with the ability to produce serial production parts for additive, with additive manufacturing and put those into our lights and avoid making an injection mold for a low volume variant or for a unique trim level or even for a unique customer. The lights are the bling. You watch any auto commercial and you're going to see the lights. They're going to zoom in on the headlights, on the taillights, and the ability to bring that unique style, that unique possibility to different variants on the same car model, but without increasing the burden of the cost of the injection molds. This is the real promise for additive in our industry. So for example, we have a circuit board, and that circuit board is held in place by a bracket. And this is kind of the unseen, the non-glorious the non part of things, but it's, but it's pretty interesting that we could see that bracket holds the circuit board with a screw. So this is the kind of part that we could initially target to do in additive manufacturing. How does a 3D printed bracket get you to the greater range of variety? Well, the different lighting scheme might require different circuit boards. If I want to do, say, five different types of circuit boards for five different types of lighting, for a conventional process, I need five injection molds. With an AM process, I can make five at once. I can make all five of them in one print or at whatever ratio I wanted to build. I could build them just in time. If this week I'm building variant A and next week I'm building variant C, I just print the ones that I need right when I need them. I don't have to have those molds, set the molds up, run the inventory, store the parts, store them in the warehouse, bring them to the assembly line. I can literally print them practically just in time for the assembly process based on the variant that we need that particular day. And so these outer components of the assembly, the housing, uh, these would be injection molded, but there's uh, room for changing the way the light uh, operates and delivers its effect, and um, things like a different circuit board will give you that. We could even move into our optical parts. The nice thing is the AM processes accept the complexity well. I could add a lot of different attachments, I could add a lot of different geometries that wouldn't ordinarily be possible due to restrictions of die draw and injection molding parts. I can make undercut features, I can make features with no draft or negative draft that wouldn't be possible at all that can allow us to use other functional materials for some of these functions and then allow us to potentially reconfigure the whole way the lamp is put together in a quick way. Is there a way that ultimately 3D printing might affect the, the visual experience of the light, how I see the light outside the car behaving? We see the possibility, not now, not today, but within a couple years to even take those optical components and make them with additive manufacturing. We'll start with reflective parts. And then in other cases, we have metalized parts that serve as a reflective surface. 
those parts are, uh, are very much in sight of uh, additive manufacturing. The next level is the translucent and transparent optical parts. And this is a real challenge on the materials end of the equation. T to date, none of the materials that are translucent and transparent um, in the AM space are really suited for optical properties. They haven't been really tested for optical. They don't have the mechanical durability. They're missing a lot of things. But the good news we see is in the space, we have the global chemical companies entering. We have companies like BASF, companies like DSM, who's actually been around for a long time are redoubling their efforts. I see a future where not long away, we could print these transparent and translucent parts as well. Mm -hmm.